You just need to move down to the next right, okay. slide and up if you want to go back. Right, okay. okay. Sorry. Um, so I'm here today, um, the last slot of the day, and hopefully not death by PowerPoint. I've literally got about four or five slides. Um, I'm here today to talk about uh, a project that I've become involved in in the last sort of six months. Um, it's called Walking Tours on Peels. It was previously known as Historical Paisley. Um, and my involvement with it is essentially on a social media basis um, because I was looking for some volunteering opportunities. Um, I've done social media for a variety of community organisations. Um, I have a history that links me with Paisley. I live in Govan, um, but I have links to Paisley that have go back about 20 years. When I was at university there, met my partner there, um, and I've spent the last 12 years managing a, a, a volunteer organisation there. So I, I, I love the area, I love the, the whole of Venture, I love the town, I love the people. Um, so I kind of came across this, and the gentleman um, who is behind Walking Tours and Wheels is a gentleman called Les Fernie. If any of you have been to Paisley at all, you will have come across Les. He is a legend in his own, um, you know, everybody knows Les, he's Paisley's tour guide. Um, so Les started uh, Historical Paisley back in 1994, um, basically offering free walking tours of Paisley. And the reason he did it was because he absolutely loves Paisley. He was at that point, I think, working for the Procurator Fiscal's office in Paisley as a kind of security guard. Um, but in his free time, what he wanted to do was share his love of Paisley. Um, which he had got from growing up from his parents and he just used to know everything and basically what he wanted to do was go out and tell everybody else how fabulous Paisley was uh, and we're all kind of aware that Paisley for a long time was, it's always lived a bit under the cloud of glass when there's been a lot of negativity about it um, so Les um, has been doing it now for what's that, 23 years he is Paisley's uh, first accredited uh, Scottish Tourist Board um, accredited Yellow Badge Tour Guide um, which is something he achieved just uh, two years ago, 2015. Um, and essentially, the, the organisation is set up as a voluntary organisation. So that means that it's not for profit, it um, you know, secures funding as and when needed. Um, but essentially, the organisation is Les himself, um, and he basically uses it to share his love of Paisley. It's Buddies, which, if anyone doesn't know Buddies, is the term used for people from Paisley, um, it's buildings and its history. Um, and essentially, Paisley is a town um, which people will often say, if you walk around looking at ground level, there's really nothing to see, but if you walk around looking upwards, it's a fabulous city. Or town, rather, well, city we call it that. Basically, what does walking tours, and, um, maybe to put the history of it, it was known as Historical Paisley. The organisation changed its name several years ago to Walking Tours and Wheels um, because Les um, suffered quite a serious stroke about seven years ago. Um, so his mobility was seriously impaired. He's made a very good recovery. But he is now essentially he's um, he can walk, but he uses a build, um, a, motobil a mobility scooter most of the time. So he very creatively decided to change the name from historical Paisley to Walking Tours and Wheels, which essentially you can hopefully understand the concept behind it. So what he, the aim of the organisation is to provide free, fully accessible walking tours of Paisley. Um, he also, on top of that, does presentations and reminiscence. So in groups, particularly maybe um, in lunch groups or in organisations um, in nursing homes or care homes where people can't get out into the community and see what's going on. And he does bespoke tours, which is a really quite a big part of what Les does. Um, he is Paisley's official tour guide, although and you can go to Paisley and ask, where do I find the tour guide? And everybody knows who you're talking about. But he essentially does, when the council, for instance, have visiting dignitaries or we've done them with um, the University of the West of Scotland as well when we've had we, we've got in collaboration with them if they've had conferences one of the things they've offered is to have a tour of the location a tour of the town um, through well, using laser services so quite recently we did one for um, an international biochemistry convention that was on at the UWS and a lot of the, the people that came along were fantastically interested in the fact that here they were for a four-day conference and they had you know, a half hour, three quarters of an hour chance to see the place where they were, they, were, they were spending their time. Because that's not something that normally happens if you ever go to conferences. Normally you go, you go to the speeches and you come away and that's it. Um, so the spoke tours, another one, um, well, an example there would be the group that's behind you there is the Glasgow Disability, um, Resort, um, Disability Alliance. And they, they could become them. So that was a very recent one that I've just done a couple of months ago. Um, but also we did one quite recently with the local authority in, in the family of Jane Henning, who you might have seen in the news quite recently, who is a missionary who went out to Auschwitz. Um, and she spent 10 years as a secretary in the Paisley Thread Mills. Um, so her family was over from Canada and the US and they had requested a tour. So um, Les was called upon to produce a tour, to provide a tour um, where, the old, where the Thread Mills had been in Ferguson, which uh, don't exist anymore. 
Um, and we also do special events such as the Easter egg hunt where Les is dressed up as a bunny on his wheelchair um, and the Halloween ghost tours. And those are special events that ones that are charged for simply because we have to bring in particular people to do um, you know to do particular parts of it. And but the, the charge is always small. Um, and the majority of the tours are free. Some of the we do take donations if, if people are wanting to make them. Um, but at the moment, it is essentially it's, it's cost neutral. Um, so what about Paisley? Well, Paisley is, um, as you're probably all aware, because it's part of the 2021 bid, and that's obviously a very big thing. Um, so it's, got, it's Scotland's largest town. There's about 76,000 inhabitants. Um, it's in a town that's been in decline after closure of you know, lots of things like the textile, in, the traditional weaving and textile industries, shipbuilding, and there's a lot of food production went on in Paisley as well. So those industries have all de- declined. It's also, it, from a retail perspective, been decimated in the high street, if you go to Paisley, town, uh, Paisley High Street, it's decimated, and that was really due to the construction of the Brayhead development, Brayhead retail development, which is just down the road. So that took away all the big, big names that were there. Littlewood was a really big name that was on the high street in Paisley. Um, but there has been a bit of resurgence in kind of small businesses in, in other areas of Paisley, which is really nice to see. Um, and basically, basically now the public sector is the biggest employer, along with the University of the West of Scotland and Glasgow Airport. Um, which is actually in Manchester. So it's just to give you a kind of picture of the, uh, the sort of town and the situation. The picture in the background there is the group of Jane Henning's family, in fact, who came over from the States um, with some of the local authority, with some of the, the local visitors, and that's um, one of the buildings near the Hayes and State Mills. Um, so there, is, there are innumerable uh, historic buildings in Paisley, over 50, in fact, although you, you, people often don't think of that. Um, so this is just a kind of list of some of the, the ones that, that are very well known. Paisley Abbey, uh, the Thomas Coates Memorial Church, which is currently going to going, um, a, a renovation and a, a, a proposal to change its kind of use. Um, we've got the Coates Observatory, the John Nielsen Institute, which is now, um, or, um, which is now um, housing. Um, we've got the Glen Cinema and the, the, the very sad story behind that. So the cinema itself is not still there, but the, we can go to see the, 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 the it's part of the Heritage Trail. You can go to the, the door where it all happened. Um, we've got Paisley Town Hall, obviously, Oakshaw Trinity Church, Dunn Square, the Russell Institute, Small Shop Cottages and Tannehill Cottage. And they're just some of, of the, the places within Paisley, but often you need to go out and look, um, look up and look out. The background there, that, that's... Um, the the fairy thread but works that bit of stone work for instance is right beside a new housing development but it's been left there so you can see it when you pass. Um and really I suppose what what does the future hold? Um we are waiting for the bid the outcome of the Paisley twenty twenty one bid next month. That's obviously a, a, a huge <coughs> thing for the for not just for our organisation because we're a very, very small part of that bid and um, but also for the whole of the, the local community. So that is the, the really thing that we're we're, we're holding on to. The organisation, it is really based around Les um, and, 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 his, and, and his family, so it is heavily reliant on Les and kind of one of the things that I, I kind of come from a, a, a social enterprise development background has been trying to talk to Les about how we can probably move it forward and change the structure of it and make it bigger and, and, and different and more important because ultimately it is very reliant on what he does and his knowledge, um, but it would be a real shame to see it go because it is such a part of the kind of Paisley community. Um, so it's very heavily reliant on He knows that. Um, so it's about thinking about how we can change that. And I think if we can get the Paisley, if the Paisley 2021 bid comes ahead, then that will certainly be an opportunity for us to, to hopefully set it up in a slightly different way that we can sustain it and keep it going in the future. And looking at some of the things, um, you know, looking at volunteering opportunities for uh, within the community. Um, obviously, one of the other issues is funding. You know, how do we move it forward at the moment? It is essentially reliant on donations from uh, people who, who come on tours or small amounts of money that are generated through tours being offered um, and small amounts of local authority funding. It's not set up in a sort of way where we've got a continual funding stream um, and that's something we'd like to address as well. Um, and then that's just where you can find us. Uh, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter and the contact telephone numbers. I hope that's enough. <laughs>